The first time you're exposed to permutations and combinations, it takes a little bit to get your brain around it. So I think it never hurts to do as many examples. But each incremental example, I'm going to go. I'm going to review what we've done before, but hopefully go a little bit further. So let's just take another example, and this is in the same vein. And in, in the next, in, in videos after this, I'll start using other examples other than just people sitting in chairs. But let's stick with it for now. So let's say we have six people again. So person A, B, C, D, E. And F, so we have six people, and now let's put them into four chairs. We can go through this fairly quickly. One, two, three, four chairs, and we've seen this show multiple times. How many ways, how many permutations are there of putting these six people into four chairs? Well, the first chair, if we see them in order, we might as well. We could say, well, there'd be six possibilities here. Now, for each of those six possibilities, there would be five possibilities of who we put here because one person's already sitting down. Now, for each of these thirty possibilities of seating these first two people, there'd be four possibilities of who we put in chair number three. And then, for each of these, what is this, 120 possibilities, there would be three possibilities of who we put in chair four. And so, this six times four times six times five times four times three is the number of permutations. And we've seen in one of the early videos on permutations that, or, or we, when we talk about the permutation formula, one way to write this, if we wanted to write it in terms of factorial, we could write this as as six factorial, six factorial, which is going to be equal to six times five times four times three times two times one. But we want to get rid of the two times one, so we're going to divide that. We're going to divide that. Now, what's two times one? Well, two times one is two factorial, and where did we get that? Well, we wanted the first four, the first four factors of six factorial. So, if you want, and that's where the four came from. We wanted the first four factors, and so the way we got two is we said six minus four. Six minus four. That's going to get us what we want to get. That, that's going to give us the number that we want to get rid of, or so we wanted to get rid of two, or the factors we want to get rid of. So that's going to give us two factorial. So if we use six minus four factorial, then that's going to give us two factorial, which is two times one, and then these cancel out. And we are all set. And so this is one way. This is, you know, I, I put in the particular numbers here, but this is a review of the permutations formula, where people say, hey, if I'm saying n, if I'm taking n things and I want to figure out how many permutations are there of putting them into, let's say, k spots, it's going to be equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial. That's exactly what we did over here. Where six is n, and k or four is k. Four is k. Actually, let me color code the whole thing so that we see, so that we see the, so that we see the parallel. Now all of that is review, but then we went into the world of combinations, and in the world of combinations, we said, okay, permutations, permutations make a difference between who's sitting in what chair. So for example, in the permutations world, and this is all review. We've covered this in the first combinations video. In the permutations world, A, B, C, D, and D, A, B, C, these would be two different permutations. That's being counted in whatever number this is. This is what? This is 30 times 12. This is, this is, equal, to, this is equal to 360. So this is each of these, this is one permutation. This is another permutation. And if we keep doing it, we would count up to 360. But what we learned in combinations, when we're thinking about combinations, let me write combinations. So if we're saying n choose, n choose k, or how many combinations are there? If we take k things and we just want to figure out how many combinations, sorry, if we start with n, if we have a pool of n things and we want to say how many combinations of k things are there, then we would count these as the same combination. So what we really want to do is we want to take the number of permutations there are. We want to take the number of permutations there are, which is equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial, over n minus k factorial. And we want to divide by the number of ways that you could arrange four people. 
once again, and, and this takes, I remember the first time I learned it, it took my brain a little while. So if it's taking a little while to think about it, not a big deal. It's, 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 it, it can be confusing at first, but it'll hopefully, if you keep thinking about it, hopefully you, you will see clarity <laughs> at some moment. But what we want to do is we want to divide by all of the ways that you could arrange four things. Because once again, in the permutations, it's counting all of the different arrangements of four things. But we don't want to count all of those different arrangements of four things. We want to just say, well, they're all one combination. So we want to divide by the way the number of ways to arrange four things. Now, if or or the number of ways to arrange k things. So let me write this down. So what is the number of ways, number of ways to arrange k things, k things in k spots? And I encourage you to pause the video because this is actually a review from the first permutation video. Well, if you have k spots, let me do it. So this is the first spot, the second spot, third spot, and then you're going to go all the way to the kth spot. Well, for the first spot, there could be k possibilities. There's k things that could take the first spot. Now, for each of those k possibilities, how many things could be in the second spot? Well, it's going to be k minus 1 because you already put you already put something in the first spot. And then over here, what is it going to be? k minus 2. All the way to the last spot, there's only one thing that could be put in the last spot. So what is this thing here? k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 times k minus 3, all the way down to 1. Well, this is just equal to k factorial. The number of ways to arrange k things in k spots, k factorial. The number of ways to arrange four things in four spots, that's 4 factorial. The number of ways to arrange three things in three spots, it's 3 factorial. So we could just divide this. We could just divide this by k factorial and so this would get us this would get us n factorial divided by k factorial k factorial times times n minus k factorial n minus k n minus k and I'll put the factorial right over there and this right over here is the formula this right over here is the formula for combination. Sometimes this is also called the binomial coefficient. People will call this n choose k. They'll also write it like this, n choose k, especially when they're thinking in terms of binomial coefficients. But let's, I, I got into kind of an abstract tangent here when I started getting into the, the general formula. But let's go back to our example. So in our, exa in our example, we saw there was a 360 ways of seating six people into four chairs. But what if we didn't care about who's sitting in which chairs, and we just want to say, how many ways are there to choose four people from a pool of six? Well, that would be, that would be how many ways are there. So that would be six, how many combinations? If I'm starting with a pool of six, how many combinations are there? How many combinations are there for selecting four? Or another way of thinking about it is, how many ways are there to, from a pool of six items, people in this example, how many ways are there to choose four of them? And that is going to be, you know, we could do it, a, you know, well, I'll, I'll apply the formula first and then I'll reason through it. And like I always say, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the formula. Every time I, I you know, I revisit it after a few years, I actually just re, re, rethink about it uh, as opposed to memorizing it because memorizing is a good way to um, not understand <laughs> what, what, what's actually going on. But if we just applied the formula here, but I really want to understand, I really want you to understand what's happening with the formula, it would be six factorial over four factorial over four factorial times 6 minus 4 factorial. 6, whoops, let me actually, let me just, so this is 6 minus 4 factorial, so this part right over here, 6 minus 4 factorial, actually let me write it out because I know this can be a little bit confusing the first time you see it. So 6 minus 4 factorial, factorial, which is equal to, which is equal to 6 factorial over 4 factorial, over 4 factorial times this thing right over here is 2 factorial times 2 factorial, which is going to be equal to, we could just write out the factorial, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 
4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times times 2 times 1. And of course, that's going to cancel with that. And then the 1 really doesn't change the value. So let me get rid of this 1 here. And then let's see, this 3 can cancel with this 3. This 4 could cancel with this 4. And then it's 6 divided by 2 is going to be 3. And so we are just left with 3 times 5. So we are left with, we are left with, there's 15 combinations. There's 360 permutations for putting six people into four chairs, but there's only 15 combinations because we're no longer counting all of the different arrangements for the same four people in the four chairs. We're saying, hey, if, if it's the same four people, that is now one combination. And you can see how many ways are there to arrange four people into four chairs? Well, that's the four factorial part right over here, the four factorial part right over here, which is four times three times two times one, which is 24. So we just essentially just took the 360 divided by 24 to get 15. But once again, I don't want to uh, I can't I don't think I can stress this enough. I want to make it clear where this is coming from. This right over here, let me circle. This piece right over here is the number of permutations. And this is really just so you can get to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3. It was exactly what we did up here where we reasoned through it. And then we just want to divide by the number of ways you can arrange four items in four spaces.